Whoa, easy boy. <sighs> Listen to him. Don't dogs have any dignity? I've got a surprise for you guys. A surprise? Ooh, what sort of surprise? I want a surprise. Meow, 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 meow. The things I wouldn't do for a present. It better be worth it. I thought both of you could do with a little grooming before your monthly checkup with Liz. I humiliated myself for a grooming tool? Who wants to try it first? Garfield? You try it. No one touches this verb in my hairdresser. Odie! Good boy. Come over here. Uh, hang on, Odie. Oh, hi, Liz. Lunch tomorrow? Sure, I'd love to. Odi, Odi, Yahoo. Odi. I'm bored. All that fuss over a mere brush? See you. Whoa! You are a sad, strange little dog, Odie. Hey, Odie, want to play kick the dog with me? What do you mean you'd rather spend time with her? It's just a stupid brush. This is a new low, even for you, Odie. Hey, if you break up with the brush, I've got some nice nail clippers for you. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? <sighs> Do me a favor and drop that stupid breast before they see you. I refuse to be the laughing stock of the entire neighborhood. Hi, Garfield. Hi, Odie. Hey, Odie. Is that a brush you're holding? Yeah. More like an imaginary girlfriend. Look who's talking. Remind me why you always carry that teddy bear of yours everywhere. Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that is just so cute. I have got to do something about that brush. Yahoo, Yahoo. in this house. An imaginary and nut, you're out. <laughs> Dogs have the attention span of a goldfish. Give it an hour and he won't remember that brush. Trust me. Ah, shoot, I'm late. Liz is gonna kill me! Oh! Odie? Odie, what 
on earth are you doing? <coughs> Odie, stop it! Bad dog! Bad dog! <laughs> Uh, Liz? <laughs> of course I didn't forget our brunch. <laughs> yep, I'm on my way. <laughs> hey, you don't happen to know a good gardener, do you? All that fuss for a stupid brush? This is ridiculous. And you don't have anything to do with the brush's disappearance, do you? How could you think so badly of me? <sighs> okay, I did it. I got rid of that stupid brush. And I was doing Odie a favor, if you ask me. Oh, please, save it for the jury. You did it because you were jealous Odie cared about someone else. Someone else? We're talking about a brush, aren't we? For Odie, it was much more than just a brush, and you knew that, too. Nah, he'll get over it. We're gonna need more coffee. How about earplugs? Uh, not funny. Where's my breakfast lasagna? <sighs> Sorry, Garfield. I feel way too tired to cook you anything. Okay, sleep deprivation I can actually deal with. But lasagna deprivation? That is just flat out intolerable. I gotta fix this mess. Uh, I'm sorry, man. It has bristles and a handle. Perfect. Odie will never know the difference. Oh my! Odie, look who's back. Well, that dog isn't brain dead after all. Who would have thought? Okay, fine. You won. I'll take you to your girlfriend. This is where the cruel deed was done. Whoopsie doopsie. Odie, wait! I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose one of my nine lives, just for a stupid brush. <laughs> Sorry, kid, this is an emergency. Hey! I'll bring it back, I promise. Welcome aboard and fasten your seatbelt. We're in for one bumpy ride. Be just another greasy spot on Main Street. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> Ugh, barf. <gasps> Hody, Hody, come back! Bad dog, bad! It can't get any worse, can it? Watch out! Do you 
to be recycled. <laughs> Get out of here. <clears throat> there you are. I've been looking for you all over. Ew, gross. You two smell as if you just crawled out of a garbage disposal. <laughs> I can't smell a thing. What about you, Odie? Odie? This evening? <laughs> How about dinner? It's going to be great having you over for dinner tonight, Liz. And before I forget, it's very important that you not arrive late. I'll be there on time, but why is it so important to not be late? Because it's rude? No, it's just that if you're late, you probably won't get any food. Maybe even if you're on time. I'm going to start cooking any minute now. We're having roast turkey. <gasps> roast turkey? I want a turkey in a raffle. They're supposed to deliver it any minute now. Dibs on the drumsticks, and the rest of it, too. I'll be there. I hope Garfield leaves me the neck. <laughs> she says she hopes you leave her the neck. <gasps> the neck's the best part. She can have an ankle. Sounds like my turkey's here. Wonder how it rang the doorbell. John Arbuckle, I'm Mr. Gizzard, your local poultry specialist. I have a turkey for you. Thanks. Hey, this turkey's alive! Uh, Mr. Gizzard, the turkey! It's alive! So? Well, it's just that I can't... Uh, I mean, I can't cook it if... Oh, that is... You won a live turkey. I delivered a live turkey. If you don't know what to do with him, it's not my problem. Gobble. Oh. Hmm. Ooh, turkey for dinner. I'm having turkey for dinner. Delicious roast turkey dinner. Uh, yum, 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 yum. Mm. Sure, you can have some. You can have the other ankle. Mm. Huh? Hi, guys. We're having lasagna for dinner. Lasagna for dinner. I'm having lasagna for dinner. Delicious baked lasagna. Lasagna? <clears throat> huh. Change of menu. If you want roast turkey, it's easy, Garfield. You go put it in the oven. <sighs> well, at least it's fresh. Hmm. My dinner seems to be having lunch. Sorry, Garfield. I don't have the heart to end that little turkey's life, and neither do you. I hate it when John's right. Fortunately, it doesn't happen very often. <sighs> hmm. 
time for my nap. John being right, how about that? <laughs> but he is right, I couldn't end that. <laughs> Maybe I spoke too soon. Okay, uh, Mr. Turkey kind, sir. Hi. I hate to disturb you, but uh, I was wondering if you could do one teensy-eensy little thing for me. Well, I was just kind of hoping perhaps you could... Oh, I see, how could I put this delicately? Get out of my bed! <laughs> A turkey in my bed. Is there anything I like less than a turkey in my bed? <laughs> yes, a turkey in my supper dish. Scram, get away, evaporate. Well, I think he's learned his lesson. I don't think he'll cause me any more trouble. This is my favorite show, Garfield. Mine too, except what I really like are the commercials for burritos. <laughs> You know, a hot turkey sandwich would taste really good right about now. I'll just put him outside. If you're gonna sing that loud, fella, you're gonna have to be further away. I'm thinking Peru. <laughs> What just happened? Ouch. Okay, Turkey. You just became a to-go order. Scrawny, scraggly little neck of yours. Gazunchite. <laughs> Don't tell me you're allergic to feathers, too. <laughs> that turkey's going to drive us all crazy. I'm going to catch him and take him back to Mr. Gizzard. Oh, this I gotta see. <laughs> Could it be to catch a turkey? About that hard. I think it's time to leave this to the professionals. I'll be down in the basement. Get your boy. Fortunately, some of us have a large selection of costumes in our costume trunks. Pirate costume, cowboy suit, cat costume. Why would I ever need this? Ah, turkey costume. Apart from a few mashed potatoes and gravy stains, it's perfect. 
Hello, fellow turkey, gobble, gobble. This way, buddy. Gotcha. Don't worry, Garfield. I'll get him back to Mr. Gizzard. Mr. Gizzard, I'd like to return this. Oh! You were very close. Uh, sorry. That's not a turkey. It's a cat in a turkey suit. I'll be right back. I'd like a turkey, please. Do you have one without fur? This time, I have the right turkey. He's cute and all. We just can't keep him around the house. Sure, I'll take him back. Maybe you can find a good home for him. Home? Oh, this ain't a pet store, you know. You... you're not going to... It's what we do here, pal. Hey, wanna let me have him too? <laughs> what I could get for him by the pound. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll just take this one. What are we going to do? I mean, we can't just let him... I'll take care of this or my name isn't Garfield Turkey. Uh, cat. You stay here. I have some knives to sharpen. We're gonna spring you from the joint. Just breathe deep. Gesundheit! <laughs> now then, down to business. <laughs> what are you sneezing about? Are you sick? <laughs> Tell him yes. Whoa! This could be turkey pox. He could infect my whole shop. Wait, wait. Take this turkey back. Uh, but you said... You want it, it's yours. Keep it out of my store. Gosh, huh? what do we do now? I had my heart set on having turkey for dinner tonight. And we're going to have that turkey for dinner tonight. I've been looking forward to this ever since John said he was having a turkey for dinner. <laughs> All right, everybody. Here's what you've been waiting for. <laughs> My special spinach lasagna. <laughs> you really think the petting zoo will want him, Liz? Sure. The kids there will love him. And now that we've had the turkey here for dinner, maybe we can take him to a movie. First person to invent a remote control for vacuums. 
will be adored and venerated by all of cat kind. I know it's early, Garfield, but Liz's parents are coming over soon and everything needs to be perfect! Oh, I can't greet them like this! What kind of a first impression would that make? Oh. An honest one? I know Liz's parents will be watching me like a hawk and analyzing my every move. John, I think a walrus threw up on your shirt. <laughs> Odie, well-bred dogs don't beg. You can't... Odie, I just got through mopping that floor. <sighs> I'll deal with it later. Now, where is that expensive caviar I bought? Mm. <sighs> All right, listen to me, you two. My future with Liz is at stake. When her parents get here, I expect you both to be on your best behavior. And to make sure that happens, there's a little reward in store for you. Whichever one of you two makes the most effort to make a good impression will get a special treat. <laughs> Odie, go fetch the grooming brush. I'm going to give you two a little makeover before our guests arrive. Oh, no way. I'd rather cough up a giant hairball than share a brush with that mangy flea bag. I'll do my own grooming, thank you. Have it your way, Garfield! But Odie just scored a point in the effort category. Good boy, Odie. Good boy! What a suck-up. I think I'll uh, fit in a little beauty sleep before the guests arrive. Down, boy, I said get down. What in the world is going on out here? I'll tell you what, that maniac dog of yours pounced on us. You should have him on a leash if he can't behave. Odie, bad boy. I am so sorry about that. Please, please, come in. and We'll get all of you cleaned up inside. That goes for you too, Odie. <laughs> Hi, John. Nice shirt. Minus one for Odie. That reward is mine. He doesn't usually jump on guests like that. He, uh, he must have been really excited to meet you. Speaking of which, you haven't been properly introduced. Mom, Dad, this is John. John, these are my parents. Hi, I'm Mrs. Wilson, but you can call me Daddy. And I'm Mr. Wilson. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> nice to meet you. <clears throat> I, uh, I believe you're already well acquainted with my dog, Odie. <laughs> and that's Garfield, my cat. My, that's a fat cat. Liz, dear, you really should put that cat on a diet. Oh, it's a pleasure meeting you, too. You've got a nice place here, John. But I must say, this house needs a woman's touch. I don't know about the house, but John certainly does. That being said, an extra hand in the kitchen wouldn't hurt. So, John. Liz tells us you're a cartoonist. That's right. I uh... personally, I've always been for solid, respectable careers. None of that fancy schmancy stuff. I'm a tax auditor myself. That would have been my second guess after Undertaker. Bad boy, Odie. <laughs> He's usually very well behaved. Minus two for Odie. Reward, come to Papa. Raising pets is like raising children. It requires a great deal of discipline. Do you plan on having children one day, John? Dad! Speaking of children, I haven't introduced you to my son yet, John. Your son? Uh, Liz didn't mention she had a brother. John, this is Petey, my pride and joy. <laughs> I raised and nurtured him ever since he was a baby. I can trust your pets with him, can't I? Oh, sure. Uh, no problem. 
<laughs> because if any harm came to him, I, I, I just don't know what I'd do. But it breaks my heart to keep him cooped up in a cage. So she coops us up instead. She spends her time closing windows. And you spend it opening them. He's always saying it's stuffy. <laughs> Isn't he the smartest, cutest little thing? <laughs> he's the son I never had. I would have said plump and juicy, and he's going to be the hors d'oeuvres I'm going to have. Snack time. Go ahead. Be my guest. Try it. See what happens. It'll be the most fun I've had in ages. Trust me. Hey, I went to a lot of trouble chasing you, so humor me. Fight, struggle, beg, plead. Oh, please, Mr. Cat, don't eat me. There is that exciting enough for you? Oh, uh, you're going to have to do better than that. Our field? <laughs> I'm warning you, Garfield. If I catch you with that bird again, you can forget the reward. And no TV for a no, month. Stop! I wouldn't gloat if I were you. I may be minus one, but you're minus two. Ah, forget that insipid sack of feathers. It's like trying to get an adrenaline rush from a slice of plain white bread. Animate pre-slice cold cuts are a hundred times more exciting. Please, please, <gasps> please, Mr. Cat, eat me. Come on. I know you want to. Just do it, please. Hey, you're supposed to beg me not to eat you, Dodo. But I must admit, you're slightly more tempting in sandwich form. What's taking so long? Hurry up! Well, if you insist. <laughs> Petey? Oh, look! We're all out of hors d'oeuvres. Why don't I go into the kitchen and get us some more, huh? Oh, I see you've made yourself a nice... <laughs> Canary sandwich! I'll give you one last warning, Garfield. If anything happens to that bird, I'll put you on a diet of bread and water for life! Oh. <gasps> I need to get as far away as possible from that psycho bird. Petey. Petey, where are you? Come to Mama. It's not like him. He never leaves my side for long. Don't worry, Mom. He couldn't have gone far. Yeah. It's not like this house is a mansion. Uh, maybe he went upstairs. We can go have a look if you want. Oh. Ah, perfect. That should keep me out of trouble until the guests leave. Listen, it's a cruel, cold world out there, full of mean, hungry cats, not pushovers like me. I'll take my chances. You have to fend for yourself. And, and, and when you're sick, no one will make chicken soup for you. Birds don't eat chicken soup. Ah, uh, right, okay. Well, what about Betty? She'll be devastated. She raised and nurtured you. Smothered me, you mean? I've been wanting to break free from day one. And thanks to you, I finally did. I'm free as a bird. Farewell, Garfield. No, 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 no. Maybe it's for the best, Mom. How many times have you brought him into the clinic because he banged into a closet window, huh? He'll be happier out there. 
I'll be honest with you, Arbuckle. I didn't like you the minute I saw you, after what your cat just did. I know, it's unforgivable. It's... it's... It's a miracle! A darn bird was the bane of my existence. Heck, I've been trying to get rid of him for ages. And thanks to that cat of yours, he's gone for good! From now on, John, you're part of the family. Wow, I... I don't know what to say. Thank you, Mr... uh... Bob? Mr. Wilson. Don't push your luck. <laughs> Garfield? Oh, I might as well get it over with. It's time to face my fate with dignity. Bag. Oh, merciful, merciful, John. Take pity on me. Oh, please. Garfield, where have you been all afternoon? Your reward is getting cold. My reward? Ta-da! <laughs> you earned it, Garfield. Thanks to you, I'm on Mr. Wilson's good side now. As it turns out, Liz's father couldn't stand that canary, and you did him a huge favor by letting him escape. Oh, Mr. Wilson, a man after my own heart. wind up flatter than fast food pancakes. Oh, my. Oh, hi. You were probably wondering how John got into this mess. I can tell you, but it'll have to be quick. Now then. John was having trouble sleeping lately. He's tried everything. <laughs> Sleeping in all sorts of different positions? He got a book called How to Sleep. Try drinking a glass of warm milk after a hot bath. But that didn't work because John was unable to drink the hot bath. Then he decided to try counting sheep. But we didn't have any sheep, so we had to improvise. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh. That didn't work either. But it did tire out Odie. Finally, he decided to watch TV. Are you wide awake all night? Unable to sleep? Are you so tired all day that you doze off in your oatmeal? All of those. Then come see me. Dr. Sonambulo, I can enable you to sleep all night through the power of hypnosis. I'm so desperate for a good night's sleep, I'm even willing to try that. John went there the next morning, but he had second thoughts, which is two more than John usually has. I shouldn't have come here, Dr. Somnambulo. People with superior intelligence can't be hypnotized. There's no way you can cause me to... <laughs> When I press this buzzer, you will awaken. Until I press it again, you will think you are a chicken. 
better stop him before he lays an egg. Fall asleep because I'm just too smart to be hypnotized. I think you will be a fine subject for the Hypnotron computer. A hypno what? The Hypnotron computer was this thing that Dr. Sonambulo had invented to program people with hypnotic suggestions. I just enter the code for the behavior pattern I wish to implant in him, and he will be properly programmed. I didn't notice, but I guess while the doc was programming John, Odie was distracted by a fly. John Arbuckle, you will fall sound asleep every time you hear this sound. I figured that must be how it happened. John accidentally got programmed with the sound of Odie barking. Only we didn't know it at the time. Now I shall test it and put you to sleep. <laughs> and to wake him up, you just buzz the buzzer again. So I really don't think this is going to work on me. Here, kitty cat. You put him to sleep with this, and then wake him up when he is sufficiently rested. Oh, got it. And keep a careful eye on him. Huh? Once in a while, rarely. People under hypnosis have been known to walk in their sleep. And so we headed home. Liz is coming over. She's giving a speech next week to the Veterinarians Association. I guess I should have been a little suspicious that something was wrong. But my mind was on other things, like lunch. I just want you to listen to this speech I have to give. Glad to be of help. This would be a good time to eat. Not that there's ever a bad time. Ahem. My fellow veterinarians, it is an honor to appear before you today. When I was asked to address you, John! John! Are you listening to me? Hanging on every word, Liz. All right. When I was asked to address you, I asked myself how to do... If you think my speech is so boring it puts you to sleep, you can just take a nap, John Arbuckle. Goodbye! Liz? Liz? Gee, I thought she wanted me to hear her speech. Odie, did you see where Liz went? John dozed off three times during dinner and six while playing video games, and he never even knew it. Finally, it was time for bed. You can try that buzzer thing if you want, Garfield, but it won't do any good. I can't be hypnotized. For a time there, it looked like John was right. Ooh. Quiet, Odie. I'm trying to get John to fall asleep. It finally worked. Shh, don't wake him up. We thought the problem was over, but it was actually just beginning. We sat there watching TV, figuring John was fast asleep. And he was. But something in him had decided to go for a walk. See you later, John. John! Where'd he go? Another passenger without exact change. All right. Uh, 
John is sleepwalking. Just like that doctor warned, we have to wake him up. The trouble was, the bus was much faster than we were. We followed the trail of our sleepwalking friend to Vito's Pizzeria. He must have gone out the huh? back way. Huh? Any sign of him, Odie? <laughs> you get help. I'm going to try to wake him up. And that was how we both wound up up here. The trouble is, I keep buzzing this buzzer and it doesn't wake him up. There's got to be a way to wake him up before he takes the wrong step. As I was saying, I don't think there's any way to hypnotize me to sleep. I'll just lie awake here in my bed. Oh. Fall asleep. I'll be right back. While we're here, I think I'll give John a new hypnotic command. You know, guys, I got a good night's sleep and I feel great. I have a feeling my insomnia is gone. Great. In fact, I feel so good, I'm not going to make you any lasagnas right now, Garfield. I'm going for a walk. Woody, bark, please. Must make lasagnas. Woody? Huh? Must make lasagnas. Huh? Must make lasagnas. Huh? You're probably wondering why I'm putting on this costume. It's because of what happened this morning. A few weeks ago, our neighborhood got a new ice cream man. Only this ice cream man was an 
ice cream woman. Her name was Olga, and she wasn't all that happy about her job. There were three reasons. One was that the kids on her route could be a little cruel. Here you are, a nice ice cream cone for each of you. <laughs> Don't eat too much of that or you'll wind up looking like her. Another reason was that uh, she had a little problem on her route. <laughs> that problem, of course, was me. <laughs> Again, that cat! And it was a recurring problem. Every day when she showed up, I showed up. It was getting a little nippy in here. <laughs> so that was the other reason Olga was very unhappy in her job. Oh, there was one other. It said Olga was, well, kind of lonely. You know, you don't meet a lot of ideal men when you drive an ice cream huh? truck. Hey, let me have a triple dip cone. Uh, boysenberry, fish ripple, and tofu sherbet. Coming right up. Hey, Olga, you've put on a couple more pounds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I got home, Odie was watching TV. We're coming to you live from Pier 16, where museum manager Esmeralda Brubaker has just returned from an exciting expedition. Is that so? Indeed it is. The museum has just acquired this. It's a block of ice from the continental shelf in the eastern part of Greenland. It is said to contain the frozen remains of a primitive man. A caveman frozen in a block of ice? Can you thaw him out in a microwave? Uh, this is science, miss. We hope to learn more about history by defrosting the body. We'll transport it to the museum and begin the process. Oh. I brought back some ice cream bars. Want one? <laughs> Here, you can have whatever's left. Hey, the stick's the best part. You like to chase him, don't you? Okay, you're right. That was rotten even for me. If Olga's still around, I'll get you an ice cream with ice cream on it. And maybe nine more for myself. <laughs> All Olga was thinking about that day was, how long before I can get off work and go home to my crummy little apartment alone? <laughs> hey. Uh-oh, locked. Ah, there's a switch in the driver's compartment that unlocks it. Ooh. That's it, right there. And that was when I accidentally fell on the parking brake. Whoops! Ah. Stop! Don't go anywhere. No one's driving. Ah. No! Stop! Yeah. Go back with my ice cream truck! I don't have a driver's license. I don't even have a cat's license. Maybe this button stops me. Maybe this one. That button didn't stop it either. And I didn't realize it at the time, but that was the button to turn off the refrigerator in the back. What should I do? What should I do? Oh, no! Stop! Here's the man.
manual that came with the truck. Stop it. Step on the brake. Ah! I'm out of danger. Ah. Oh. Oh. I think it would have been safer to drive off the pier. It's not enough you steal my ice cream. Now you steal my ice cream truck. Myron, you think this crate really has a frozen caveman in it? Eh, yeah, who knows? All we're supposed to do is load it into the refrigerated truck when it gets here. Hey, that must be it. <laughs> you bad kitty cat! Bad! And it was about then that a weird thought came over me. I started to feel sorry for Olga. Started to feel I hadn't been too nice to her. Yes, me. Yes, I feel sorry for people once in a while. Now here, get in your costume. So where was I? Oh, yeah. So I'm guessing that's what these guys did. Are you sure this is the right truck, Myron? This is for ice cream. The museum must be saving money. Olga must have returned to her truck and driven off, totally unaware of two things. One was that she had a frozen caveman in the back on top of the cherry vanilla, and the other thing was that all the ice cream in the truck was melting. <laughs> That's right, because I'd accidentally turned off the refrigerator. Glad you're paying attention. So all the ice cream was melting, and so was the block of ice. Meanwhile, back at the pier, could you put my caveman into an ice cream truck? Uh, you said the refrigerator truck. <laughs> that was a refrigerator truck. I'm going to chase down that ice cream truck and get my property back. I didn't know what was going on, but it sounded like Olga might be in trouble. So I decided to hitch a ride and see if I could go help. And anyway, it beats walking. <laughs> As it turned out, she did need help. There's been this guy hanging around the neighborhood lately. Kind of a shady looking guy. He flagged her down. I want some ice cream, but uh, do you have change for a 20? I'm pretty sure that I do. Ah! Oh, give that back! That is mine! <laughs> well, that is mine now! <laughs> she screamed, but nobody heard. Ah! Ah! Well, almost nobody. <laughs> You cannot just take my money. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, who's gonna stop me? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Put me down! I'll give it back! I'm sorry! You came to my rescue. And right there in the street, the caveman looked at Olga. He hadn't seen a woman in, oh, a few thousand years. So to him, she looked pretty good. Ooh, woman. And she'd never seen a man look at her and think she was beautiful before. So to her, he looked pretty good. Oh. <laughs> Even the little kids in the neighborhood could see it. You think she's beautiful? Uh, pretty, pretty. There he is. There's my caveman. Everybody could see the two of them were in love. Everyone except the lady from the museum. That caveman is museum property. He has to come with me. But we just found each other. These two lovebirds need a chance to be together. Fortunately, they had me there. And fortunately, I know the smell of ice cream, even the melting kind. <laughs> you can't take him from me. Yeah. He's coming back to the museum to be studied and put on display. <clears throat> what is it, Cat? Better take a look in the back. You want me to look in the back of that truck? Ooh. What could be in there that could possibly matter to... <laughs> this is your chance, kid. Go far from her and her museum. <laughs> so they ran off. 
Oh, yeah. Well, nobody knows where they are, but I'll bet they're happy together. Oh. Get me out of this! Hmm. Don't worry. I'll have you out in, you know, I'd say about 600 spoonfuls. Well, and what will I do with the museum? I, I promised my supervisors a caveman exhibit. Well, if you leave the happy couple alone, I can help you out for a while. And so that's why we have to do this. You up for it? Okay, let's go to work. And right this way, we have our new exhibit from Stone Age Life. These figures represent a primitive cat and a saber-toothed Odie dog. Remember, Odie, we're just filling in until they find another caveman. Yeah. Okay, lunchtime. Hope it takes them a while. Mm, the food here is pretty darn good. 